So let's first take a quick look at the interface for pigments here. Uh, starting with this drop down menu here, there's an option to load in a new preset, and I find this very helpful, especially when I'm starting from scratch. Like currently, I have this sound loaded in. And let's say I want to design something completely different. I'm not going to go in and tweak individual parameters here and change up modulation assignments. That could take up a lot of time. It's best to just click new preset here and we get this basic completely reset sound, which essentially just has a sine wave tone. All right, you can save your presets, save as, import banks of presets, export individual presets or entire banks. Helpful to resize the window. You can go up to 200% the original size and Pigments uses vector-based graphics, so as you increase the size, the visual quality will remain the same. There's also handy keyboard commands here to gradually zoom in and zoom out. Built-in tutorials, you're not gonna need that because you're watching these videos. Help here to open the user manual, FAQ, and about the instrument, you can check the version number over here. All right, next we have the preset browser. And over here you can just load in presets quickly if you know specifically which preset category you're looking for and then just load in an individual preset. I'm gonna click over here to open the preset browser. Now if you've used any other Arturia software synthesizers, this browser might look familiar. It's fairly intuitive to use. So right now we're looking at all the brass and winds category because you can see that it says brass and winds from earlier. I'll clear that out. And now we're looking at all the individual presets that's available on my computer. If I want to narrow my search down, I can click on types here. Let's say I'm looking for a pad sound. I can choose a specific style, atmospheric. I can choose specific banks, let's say specifically from 3.0. And now I have a slightly smaller list and I can pick an individual preset. <laughs> If you like a particular preset, you can tag it as a favorite. And then back in the preset browser, under the light category, you will see that preset. Now before we get out of the preset browser, let's quickly also talk about this store category. So over here you can browse through and buy preset packs. This can be helpful if you're not much of a sound designer and you just want a collection of presets in a specific genre or of a specific style. For example, if you like Flume's music, this might be a good collection. So you can purchase that and then you'll have that collection. But if you're like me and you really like to design sounds from scratch, understand how a synthesizer works, it can be a lot more fun to just tweak existing patches or create sounds from scratch. All right, next we have this middle main section here and that's appearing because we're in the synth tab. So there are three tabs over here, the synth tab, the effects tab and the sequencer tab. Most of the time is going to be spent in the synth tab because we have all the main parameters of the synth. The upper section here gives you the main engines. So there are two engines and there's one utility engine. There are two filters here. In the middle section over here, we can set up all the modulation routings. And at the bottom, we have access to the individual modulators. Let's move on to the effects tab. Pigments comes with a variety of different effects built in. So you may never have to use an effect from your DAW. And you can set that up in very interesting ways, either as inserts or even send and return routings. Next, there's a very fancy arpeggiator slash step sequencer. So you can use either of them. Uh, just to give you a quick demonstration of what is possible with the sequencer, let's load in a preset. So back in the preset browser, let's get out a store here. Go to the explore tab, click on types, and then we have a category just for the sequence. I'll choose that. Let's load in this Baroque preset. Now when you click a preset once, it will load it in. It gives you a quick preview of what the preset is using in terms of the engines, and you can also read about the preset. Let's have a listen to this. I'm gonna double click the preset to completely load it in. And now let's have a listen again. So you can see here the sequencer is running and you can see all these different lanes, pitch, velocity, octave, trigger probability, gate length, slide. They're all running kind of independently because they have different lengths and they also have this option here 
to adjust the rate divider so they can also run at different rates. All right, so that's the arpeggiator slash sequencer section. There's this little sound design tip section that shows you a little bit about the preset and also shows you the sound designer for that preset. Master volume over here. And then we can click over here to open up this other section where we have further settings for MIDI. Pigments now supports the MPE protocol, so you can use your MPE controller with Pigments. There's this MIDI tab here for making MIDI assignments, and it's very, very simple to use. So let's say, as an example, I want this transpose knob to be MIDI mapped. So I'll just click it, get selected over here. I can then just tweak a knob on my controller, and then it gets assigned. I could even adjust the range of that MIDI assignment. If I do not need this anymore, I can right click and choose delete. All right, so that's the MIDI mapping section. And of course the tutorials tab that we talked about, which is also accessible from here. Okay, so that's a quick look at the entire interface for pigments. As you've probably realized, there's a lot going on here within each of these tabs. So in the next tutorial, we're gonna dive deeper into individual sections, starting with the engines and specifically the analog engine.